Chapter 2.2, we're looking at graphs of equations in two variables. We're also going to be looking at symmetry. and at intercepts. Intercepts. So let's talk, of, uh, let's begin our discussion by talking about intercepts. X-intercept. occurs at points where the graph intersects or touches the y axis the x axis set y equal to 0, and you get the x-intercept as a coordinate x and 0. Uh, visually, if we were to draw a simple picture, this is an x-intercept. And this point where the graph touches is also an x-intercept. Now, where the graph crosses the y-axis is the y-intercept. So, y-intercept occurs at point where the graph intersects the y-axis. And here you would set x equal to 0. Uh, to get the y value. Okay, remember at these points, uh, at the y-intercept, it would be 0 and y. At x-intercept, it would be x and 0, the coordinates. So, uh, if, say, we wanted to graph... Uh, y is equal to x plus 4 using intercepts. So let's put in a coordinate here. Uh, that didn't come out right. Let's put it below. Okay, here we go. So, x-intercept, set y equal to 0. So, we've got 0 is equal to x plus 4. So, x is equal to negative 4. So, we have an x-intercept at negative 4 and 0. And y-intercept, set x equal to 0. So we have y is equal to 0 plus 4. So y is equal to 4. So this would be uh, 0 and 4. So intercepts 
are at negative 4 and 0 and 0 and 4. We would go ahead and plot those two points on our graph. Put a straight line through them. This is obviously a straight line. And that will be your graph. y is equal to x plus 4. Mind you, this is using a particular method. We're not using the slope-intercept method here. Another example. Graph. y is equal to x squared minus 9. So, this is a parabola, a square graph that's down nine places. Uh, let's put in our little table here. X-intercept, set Y equal to zero. So zero is equal to X squared minus nine. So X squared is equal to positive nine x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9, which is plus or minus 3. So x-intercepts occur at 3 and 0, negative 3 and 0. Mark those points. And then y-intercept, say x is equal to 0, so y is equal to 0 squared minus 9. So y is equal to negative 9. So this is 0 and negative 9. We can mark that point also. So we have three intercepts, 3 and 0, negative 3 and 0, and 0 and negative 9. and simply put your graph through those points and we're done. Uh, FYI, you can also, um, I just wanted to make sure you know how to do this problem in, in, um, in the homework. So let's go ahead and um, open up the homework for this. Uh, here it's the same problem, so I can go ahead and type in um, type in my my coordinates, which would be negative three and zero comma. positive 3 and 0 and 0 comma negative 9 my three coordinates that I just computed and then to graph it I would use the um, the three-point quadratic tool touch the three points so positive 3, 9, and so a negative 3, positive 9, and positive 3. I hope I touched those correctly. How does that look to you? Okay, so there's your question solved. I'm going to snip this and include it in the homework. Okay, all right, so let's continue. So the question is in the notes and you can see how to answer it. All right, now uh, to determine
if a point is on a given graph substitute and check if the left hand side is equal equivalent to the right hand side so to do that uh, let's say we're given y squared is, is equal to x squared plus 625 are the following points on the graph a 0 and 25 b 25 and 0 and c negative 25 and 0 so substituting we have um, 25 squared is equal to 0 squared plus 625 so 625 is equal to 625 so clearly the left hand side is equal to the right hand side yes 0 and 25 is on the graph Uh, if we're substituting 25 for x and 0 for y, we have 0 squared is equal to 25 squared plus 625, which is 0 is equal to 1250. So clearly, left-hand side is not equal to the right-hand side, so no 25 and 0 is not on the graph and finally negative 25 and 0 making our substitution 0 squared is equal to negative 25 squared be careful you are squaring negative 25 so it becomes positive 20, 625 So 0 is equal to 1250, so no negative 25 and 0 is not on the graph. Um, next I wanted to speak about uh, symmetry a graph is symmetric with the x-axis if x, y, and x, negative y are on the same graph. Essentially, what's happening here is this graph is a mirror on the x-axis. So you'd have a graph that probably looks like this, where if you fold it on the x-axis, you'd have the same picture on both sides. And at matching 3 and negative 2, only the y value with chain sign would be on the same graph. This is x-axis symmetry. Now. A graph is symmetric 
with the y-axis if x, y and negative x, y are on the same graph. So in the first instance, only the y value change sign for x-axis symmetry. If it's y-axis symmetric, the x value would change sign. The numbers don't change, only the sign changes. So visually, this graph is a, ref a mirror on the y-axis. And if the point 2 and 4 is on the graph, then um, negative 2 and 4 is on the same graph. Finally, if a graph is symmetric with the origin then x, y and negative x, negative y are on the same graph. Uh, as an example we can use say a cubic graph y is equal to x cubed. And all this means is that we have a graph passing through the origin. In other words, if we were to fold the part in the first quadrant twice, and if this point is 2 and 3, then negative 2 and negative 3 will also be on the graph. So um, I want to look at several examples from the homework um, as to how to apply these, okay? Uh, let's look at this one first. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this uh, into our notes so we can see it. Question is asking to draw a complete graph so that its y-axis uh, is symmetric. In other words, every single point on the right-hand side would be mirrored on the left-hand side to be y-axis symmetric. So the point uh, 1 and negative 2 would change to uh, negative 1, negative 2. And the point 2 and 1 will change to negative 2 and 1. And the completed graph would be, I'm going to put it in dotted so you can see it. Like that. pull up some other types of questions. Um, question here is asking, okay, let's copy and paste this to the notes. Okay, so find the equation of the, sorry, the graph of an equation is given, find the intercepts. So notice that this graph has uh, two intercepts, one at one and zero. That's where it crosses the um, 
x-axis, it does not have any y-intercepts. It's not crossing the y-intercept at all, the y-axis at all. Now, uh, is the graph symmetric with the origin, the x-axis, or the y-axis? So to see this, you would want to pick a point on the graph. So 2 and 4, sorry, we've got point 2 and 4 is on the graph. Then if you look over here, you'll see uh, negative 2 and 4 is also on the graph. So the graph is um, y-axis symmetric. Then if you look down here, you'll see a neg uh, 2 and negative 4 is on the graph. So the graph is x-axis symmetric. And then if you look over here, negative 2 and negative 4 is also on the graph. So this graph is symmetric the x-axis, the y-axis, and the origin. Copy and paste this one. Oops. All right, here we go. Um, so first they want the intercepts. This graph has three intercepts. Intercepts, one at negative pi and zero. Then a second one at zero and zero. Then a third one at positive pi and zero. Okay, those three points where it crossed or touched the x-axis. Now let's talk about symmetry. So we're going to use this point here. That point is at pi over 2 in 0. Right here we can see that negative pi over 2 in 0 is also on the graph. So the... Um, the x value changes in sign. And what does that tell us about the graph, if the x value changes in sign? I'm sorry, this is not 0. This is, yep, uh, it's caught me with a mistake. Though. Let's call it uh, pi over 2, and I don't know what that point is. Maybe point, let's call it point 2. Uh, Let's call it negative one-third. And then this one is uh, negative pi over 2 and positive one-third. Okay? So notice that the signs change only... Uh, the, the, the sign for both um, x changes and y changes. I don't know what pi, pi over 2 becomes negative pi over 2 and negative 1 over 3 becomes positive 1 over 3, which is telling us that since both x and y uh, change signs, then the graph is symmetric only with the origin. Both signs change for the points. So this would be origin symmetry. Uh, one more example here. Can I do that? Oop. Well, let's try this one. All right, so this graph, we can see it only has one intercept at 
negative 3 and 0. That's this point right here. And quite obviously, this graph is a mirror on the x-axis, so it's only x-axis symmetric. Not too much to think about here. Okay? Only x-axis symmetric. All right, now um, I want to do one last question. Let's uh, answer this question here. Um, this is determine, uh, determining algebraically if a graph is symmetric. Okay, so the way you would do this is If you're not given the graph this time, you're just given an equation and you have to determine symmetry. Okay? So the intercepts, first of all, x intercept, set y equal to 0. So 0 is equal to x plus 81. So x is equal to negative 81. So we have um, negative 81 and 0. Then the y-intercept, set x equal to 0. So we have y squared is equal to 81. So y is equal to plus or minus 9. You have to type these in as coordinates. So 0 and 9 and 0 and negative 9. Now, quite obviously, the, the coordinates show that um, 0 and 9 and 0 and, and negative 9 are on the same graph. In other words, the y value changes sign, um, so symmetry with the x-axis is given, okay, since 0 and 9 and 0 and negative 9 are on the same graph. And um, FYI, to actually do it algebraically, you would change the sign um, to determine symmetry for x-axis symmetry. Uh, you would change the sign on y, so y goes to negative y. So if I have negative y squared is equal to x plus 81, I would get back exactly the same equation. And then x-axis symmetry, sorry, y-axis symmetry, I would change x to negative x. That would give y squared is equal to negative x plus 81, which is not the original equation, so it's not y-axis symmetry. And if it's not x and y-axis symmetry, symmetric, then it will not have origin symmetry.